You start your day trying to do everything right. You got your berries, you've got your organic superfood greens, you've got your protein, you're making a healthy smoothie because you want to fight inflammation, you want to improve your insulin sensitivity, you want to feel good, but bam. What if I told you that one simple common ingredient in that smoothie is acting like a Trojan horse? You're at the risk of sounding overly gimmicky. What if I told you it's secretly unleashing an enzyme that destroys the antioxidants that you're paying a fortune for, and it renders your healthy smoothie pretty much useless? This isn't an over-exaggeration, but it does need some context, okay? I'm talking about this guy right here. The banana. Now, a while back, I had Dr. Rhonda Patrick on my channel, and she's the one that turned me on to this. Now, we caught some garbage for it, for sure, because we talk about kind of bashing a banana in a way, but I needed to investigate it more before I did a full video on it, and here we are. So let me be perfectly clear. This doesn't mean bananas are bad. Bananas are a really good source of potassium. They're a good source of prebiotic fiber. They are kind of sugar bombs, but when and how you use them really does matter. Okay, so it's about being strategic to get the most bang for your buck out of all the ingredients in your smoothie. It's not about bashing a banana. It's about helping you get the most out of your food. Okay, It's not just the banana though. There's a whole class of foods that contain a polyphenol destroying enzyme, if you want to call it that called polyphenol oxidase or PPO, which we'll call it in this video. The science is pretty new and it's pretty darn alarming, but it's not scary. It just teaches us how to use our food. And a lot of it makes sense when you think about it even ancestrally. So first I'll break down exactly what this PPO enzyme is and which common foods are loaded with it. Secondly, I'm going to show you the new research that reveals exactly how it hijacks antioxidants in your smoothie or with other foods before your body ever even gets a chance to use them. And then most importantly, I'm going to give you a simple pragmatic three-step framework to neutralize the effects of PPO so you can finally get every single antioxidant and you're wasting money on otherwise. So if you're tired of spending a bunch of money on supplements and healthy foods without seeing results, you got to pay close attention. This is the stuff that no one really talks about because they're worried about getting destroyed on the internet for demonizing a food. What exactly is this PPO? All right, let's break it down. PPO is an enzyme that's in a bunch of plants. Think of an enzyme as a little pair of like molecular scissors that causes a specific chemical reaction. So the job of these particular scissors is to grab onto healthy polyphenols. Okay, these are the antioxidants that are in the fruits and veggies we're eating and destroy them when they're exposed to oxygen. They're not supposed to be exposed to oxygen. So the most obvious sign of PPO at work is when a vegetable or a fruit is browning. So when you see like an apple or uh, you peel a banana and it starts to turn brown, what you're actually watching is literally the PPO destroying the antioxidants and turning them into the brown pigments. So that brown color is sort of the graveyard of your polyphenols. It's a visual cue that basically the health benefits are vanishing before your eyes, plain and simple. So let's talk about what foods are the biggest offenders, which ones have the most PPO. And it's pretty common kitchen staples. So for one, it's bananas, which is definitely the number one offender by a long shot. Then we've got apples. Then we've got pears. We've got avocados, potatoes, lettuce, grapes, mangoes. If it turns brown after you cut it, you can bet that it's loaded with PPO. That's plain and simple. So again, what happens is enzymes just to part of the fruit cycle. It's not the end of the world. It's the browning process that is linked to ripening. So it's not like this evil compound. Okay, It's a piece of biochemistry that we need to understand and manage to get the best result out of our fruit. So it's not that the fruits are the problem. It's how they interact with the other fruits that we eat. Something to mention, if your gut is wrecked, you're not absorbing nutrients anyway. You're not absorbing the polyphenols, the antioxidants that you're looking for. And you have to take care of your gut like it's an entirely different system. I put a link down below for Armra Colostrum. Now, Armra Colostrum is not even a supplement. It's a living food. It's a real food. Okay. So it's bioactive. So it has over 400 different bioactive compounds in it. So it's really like eating a living food that really does have strong evidence that's supporting your gut barrier integrity. So this is something that I have noticed make a huge difference personally in my recovery. Okay. I also feel like I'm well rested. I don't feel like I'm coming down with things as much. And it all comes down to the fact that they are one of the most unique colostrums that are out there. The only one that I know of that uses a biopotent cold extraction extraction or processing technology. So essentially, instead of like pasteurizing and heating it where it destroys all the living aspects of colostrum, they have a way of doing it through a cold technology that doesn't heat it and denature it. This is really important. That's why they're making such a big boom. Like we're seeing them in Target, we're seeing in all kinds of retailers because people are realizing they feel different when they take this stuff. So I put that link down below. That is a 
30% off discount link for Armra. So just underneath this video in the top line of the description, it's going to be tryarmra.com slash Thomas. So again, that's tryarmra.com slash Thomas for 30% off. So check them out. So who cares if your smoothie turns a little brown because you plan to drink it right away? Does it really actually matter? This is where it gets serious. It's not just about the color. This is about whether the antioxidants actually make it into your bloodstream. The whole reason you're eating fruit in the first place, realistically. Okay, there was a groundbreaking study that's published in 2023. It was published in the journal Food and Function, and it put this whole thing to the test. This is the study that got everyone, including Dr. Rhonda Patrick, talking about it. So researchers took a group of men and they had them consume these specific flavonols, all right? So uh, specific types of polyphenols that are found in berries and in cocoa. They had them consume them in three different ways. So they either gave them in a capsule form, which was the control for 100% absorption. They gave it to them in a smoothie made with mixed berries, which are really very low in PPO. And they put them in a smoothie made with the exact same amount of flavonols, but with a banana added into it. Then they measured the levels of these antioxidants in the participants' blood. Okay, The results from the mixed berry smoothie were super good. The antioxidant levels in the blood were almost as high as taking the pure capsule. But here's the kicker. When they drank the banana smoothie, the peak concentration of antioxidants in their blood was 84% lower than the control. Let me say that again. The presence of one banana erased 84% of the available antioxidants. I got to be really clear to on this. And the banana is not the villain. Okay, It's still providing some fiber it's still, it's not bad. The problem is purely about a chemical reaction that's preventing you from getting the full value of those other often really expensive berries and things like that. This is simply about maximizing a nutritional return on investment, period. If I were to put together a three-step framework to neutralize the PPOs, right, this is what I'd do. Because we're not going to stop eating the fruits and vegetables altogether. I don't recommend that. That's not what I'm really aiming for. This isn't about creating a do not eat like Thomas demonizes these foods list. It's about using food science to work with your food, not against it. So we're trying to outsmart this enzyme to unlock the full potential of what you're eating. So here's sort of the three-pronged attack that I came up with to shut this down. Number one is temperature control. Enzymes are like picky workers, really. They only operate in a, like a narrow temperature range. If it's too hot or too cold, they stop working. There was a 2023 study in the Journal of Science of Food and Agriculture, and it looked at peach slices. They found that freezing the peaches to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit significantly reduced PPO activity and stopped the browning process. The mechanism is really, really simple. Extreme cold puts the enzyme in a straitjacket. It can't move. It can't do its job. It's structure gets warped and it can't destroy polyphenols. So your first and easiest line of defense, this is exactly what you're going to do. You buy your bananas, you buy your avocados, your other high PBO freeze that we mentioned earlier. You're going to let them ripen and then you peel them, you slice them, and you freeze them immediately. So if you use the frozen bananas in your smoothie instead of a fresh one, you significantly reduce the PPO's destructive power from the get-go. So the next thing is you need to add some acidity. This changes things too. PPO's are super sensitive to acidity. Okay, it works best in a neutral pH environment, so they're just hanging out. But if you drop the pH below three, you shut down the enzyme. It's like trying to make a sensitive piece of machinery work in an acid bath. Like it's just not gonna work. It's that simple. Try taking like a nice Swiss watch or a Rolex watch and dipping it in acid and see how well it functions. This is why lemon juice keeps your sliced apples and avocados from turning brown. It's not magic. It really is just straight up enzymatic science. So there's another study that was in agriculture and food chemistry found that treating bananas with pineapple juice, so super acidic juice, completely stops the browning and inhibited PPO. So another thing that you could do is you could put something like pineapple in. I would say like strawberries or blueberries can create the environment, but they are so rich in antioxidants that you'd still cancel some of them out with the banana in there in the first place. So I would use something like maybe pineapple, strawberries could be okay. Basically, it just makes it harder for the PPO to function. The final strategy is one that you can use to sort of act like a bodyguard for your polyphenols. So there's these things called competitive inhibitors. They basically run interference by buying to this enzyme and blocking it from getting it to the polyphenols in the first place. So think of it as putting like a dummy key into the enzyme's ignition switch. So the real key, the polyphenol can't actually get it. So we already talked about pineapple, which works through acidity, but another fast fascinating, kind of unconventional one is an onion. And I know most people don't want to put onions in their smoothies, but just hear me out. So there was a study that was published in Food Chemistry found that a simple water-based onion extract completely stopped pear browning by inhibiting PPO. So again, I'm not telling you to put onion in your smoothie, but it proves with the principle that natural compounds and other plants can actually stop the PPO. So maybe you just like soak your fruits in onion juice. I don't know. This is about smart pairing, right? We know from the main study that berries are low in PPO. We also know that foods that are high in vitamin C and citric acid and like really just citrus fruits are really powerful inhibitors. 
Pineapple is a good choice for that. So if you really have to use a fresh banana, you want to overwhelm it with low PPO, high acid fruits. So you can pair it with pineapples, oranges, strawberries, really those all work well. So here's your smoothie blueprint. You're going to prioritize the low PPO ingredients first. Okay, build your smoothie around the things like the berries, the pineapple, the oranges, the mango, kale, cocoa powder. I cook cocoa powder in a smoothie a lot. And if you're using high PPO fruits like a banana, you neutralize them. Okay, so if you want to use the banana, use one that's been frozen. And then you're going to add the acidic insurance policy. Okay, so you always add a squeeze of lemon or lime and you put a handful of acidic fruit like pineapple or strawberries. It really is that simple. Okay, remember the goal is never to fear the food. The goal is to understand it. And you can understand the why, you can make the simple tweaks that give you a huge return on your health. I and mean, it's significant. Essentially, you're making it so that the money you spend is actually working for you and not just being complete waste because really it does come down to it that much. Now, I put a video here that breaks down what happens to your bottle when you go 30 hours without food. That's not a long time in the grand scheme of things. And I think it'll open your eyes to how your metabolism can shift and actually be better at using antioxidants. So that video explains a lot of things that can completely shift your metabolism. So check that one out right there and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. We're just scratching the surface on this stuff. So I'll see you in the next video.